be my question. Like, when does God think it's the right time to present a miracle? Or and and a lot of these miracles you see, they're in foreign countries. I guess I guess that's. I don't know. I, I've just you don't hear a lot of miracles happening in America, right? All of them have happened in Europe and in hmm. places. Well, and like then like that. the latest ones have been in Poland, a place right. that we know is like very, very Christian. Yeah. Do you think that miracles don't happen here? There's an approved apparition in Wisconsin. I think they do, but I don't think they're they're as talked about as the other as the others. I I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'd agree with Mike. And that, I mean, that goes to uh, what you just read from the, the Gospels, you know, lack of faith. I mean, we know the right. United States is, I mean, it's we're pretty, struggling. It's yeah. pretty rough right now. I don't know, guys. I, don't, I think this is where we're going to, we're going to diverge okay. a little bit. <laughs> so I think there's certainly, you can look around popular culture for sure. You can look at the media landscape and see like, we, we're definitely straying. But I think you get into the hearts of, you get into the hearts and homes of people. I think the faith is still very much alive. So let's unpack your question then, or your perspective, like miracles. Why do they like seem why, to... Yeah, why do they seem to always happen away from here? Or why does God even decide to intervene, you know, show a miracle? Like, I don't know. Yeah, you know, there's tons of people that will say like, um, just hypothetical situation, you know, young kid has cancer, parents, you know, are like just begging God for a miracle. And then like, you know, a miracle doesn't happen. And, you know, the parents, like, sometimes people will lose faith because of that. You yeah, know, like they beg God, so things like true. that. Why does God not intervene with a miracle in those situations, but then at other times will, you know? That's so hard those, for those are two separate two, questions yeah. then. So let's stay on, because that's a good path you're starting us on here, Mike. So it, the miraculous happens all the time, mm-hmm. I would say. Okay. It's just... Again, this is just my perspective. I think the miraculous happens all the time. And there are some uh, approved miracles in the U.S. Bob right. threw out. There's a miracle in Wisconsin where Mary appeared to a young girl. and Was that recently? Um, I don't know the dates on it. Do you, Bob? It, I mean, it was relatively recent. I'm not sure. I thought it was like in the 90s. 90s? I mean, that's kind of recent. Let's I guess. see. Look yeah. I'm looking it up right now. So it's... The it's Our Lady of Good Help in Champion, yeah. Wisconsin, eighteen fifty nine. So I mean that's not <laughs> that too far off. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah in the big saying, picture, it's recent. Like, yeah. It's always been in. It's always been in like just older, older times. I you know. I, yeah. There's a couple that you you read about two thousand one, two thousand thirteen, but a lot of them have happened in in centuries past. You yeah. know. Sure. I don't think people believe as much, so they don't. It doesn't carry through yeah. media. So that's people, true. Yeah. We're certainly desensitized. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Do any of you guys know somebody that actually experienced a miracle? Actually, yes. Yeah, I did. Oh, right. Well, here's the thing. I mean, let's. Uh, this is where we defined what a miracle is when we first started off, right? Something that causes awe, something where we don't necessarily understand the cause. Mm-hmm. Then let's, because we can all point to things that we think is miraculous in our lives. I'm sure we can all like at one point or another say, wow, that was miraculous. Absolutely. Yeah. But what does the church tell us for like popular veneration and acceptance of a miracle? miracle. So there's, if we can boil this down. First of all, veneration, just for those that don't know. Break it down. Basically veneration is when you uh, like, um, what's a good way to say it? Uh, Reverence or like pay a certain kind of um, respect or gratitude to something. So like you would venerate. venerate obviously God and like the saints and venerating isn't like exactly the same as worshiping. It's like, we don't worship saints. I mean, that's a common, common thing about Catholics. We do not worship saints, but we venerate them. So we reverence and give them a certain kind of respect that's special. So mm-hmm. I think that's a decent uh, definition there. Yeah. And with that, Andrew derailed my thought. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, where, where I'm sorry, going, glad you defined it. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> No, you're talking good. about miracles. Yeah, that. miracles. Yeah, so what we want to, what we're focusing on by, this is all leading toward Eucharistic miracles. We want to talk about miracle in the sense that this is the church, the Christian community, like holding up an occurrence that has been studied, that has been looked into and that has been verified and declared. And so just like there's a scientific method uh, for observing the natural world, the church kind of has a method here 
not only right there's one for declaring saints but there's one for investigating miracles, miracles right. and that's the type of miracle that we want to focus on because it's more objective right it applies to all and, of us and it has evidence and has yeah. evidence so with with that type of miracle i think there's a lot of them but part of this process is observation has to take place and so what happens first typically follows this timeline you witness something happen right let's say um my my mom's side of the family is greek ortho or orthodox mm -hmm. so eastern christians right. and uh there's actually a church out chicago suburbs saint george shout out shout out to saint george um orthodox church they had an icon that streamed myrrh and so this icon mm -hmm. was in the sanctuary and it was crying as an icon of mary crying holy myrrh which is oil wow and it would stream it and they would actually collect the of the myrrh and the cotton balls yeah. at the bottom of the icon and they would distribute the wow. the myrrh it was really miraculous my cousin actually in hawaii they have an icon in their church that's doing the same the thing same thing mm -hmm. yeah I, we, we can so, definitely talk about that so but, are those ones like in, was that investigated like was so that's the thing. So you witness this miraculous thing happen, right? Father walks into church one day, did, 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 getting ready for mass, <laughs> and he smells something, and then he's looking around, and then he sees something. Whoa! This is this is this awesome. Is this is extraordinary. Yeah, this, is crazy. this icon's glossy. It's yeah. starting like I'm seeing stuff come from the eyes. It's rolling down. First thing that they do is I'm gonna give the bishop a call. Bishop, this is what's happening. Now, at that point, the bishop can choose to launch an investigation. We're going to look into it. Or the bishop might say, you know what, let's give it some time. So time is a big factor in this. I so, feel like that happens a lot, though. Yeah, they launch an investigation, and then they, they want to observe it. Yeah, they don't They don't want to do anything until they can yeah. see something. Yeah, yeah. right. I agree. So let's let it happen. Let's let it, let's let it play out. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, there's no rush to jump on it. So we're going to launch an investigation. We're going to observe it. And then we're going to try to explain it naturally. And so this is where we're going to get into, especially with Eucharistic miracles, scientific studies, doctors, sci I mean, professionals actually look at whatever that occurrence yeah. is and, and they often, try to explain it. And often non-Catholics. It's like we intentionally try to like get it outside of just the church mm -hmm. to make sure that it's like, you know, extra like verified. And so there's no bias. Yeah. And no we're, not bias, right. we're not like trying to, the church isn't trying to, you know, deceive the people. No, what, what's yeah. the point in it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So what we do is we're going to investigate, we're going to observe, we're going to try to explain this naturally. And if we can't, right, we've exhausted that, but we, we need an answer, then a declaration is made and that thing is proclaimed miraculous mm -hmm. and it's held up for reverence. Mm -hmm. So you see that a lot with like Marian apparitions. A lot of people will claim to see Mary. Mary a lot, yeah. But the church engages this process to verify that something is in fact happening that isn't naturally explainable. And so like the, sh the, the apparition in Wisconsin would have gone through a process similar to this, right? Sometimes the Vatican intervenes. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times it's the local bishop who mm -hmm. conducts this investigation. And I say all that to help us understand a little bit about the process behind miracles, but to get to your, your question, Michael, that's why they don't tend to happen here. We're a relatively young church and country. right? So that's why a lot of them, they're still in Europe and the Middle East and right because they've had time for these things to happen and to enter into like popular Catholic culture where they're held up for reverence and uh, they become like okay. associated with piety. Right. We went to Lourdes. We went to Fatima. Those happened a while ago. So they've been observed. They've been verified. Miracles have happened off those apparitions. Wow. It's part of our spirituality. So people actually make pilgrimage. That's why they're kind of held in high esteem. I'm sure that's happening in the U S we just need time for, for it to flesh out for us, to, for it to flesh out, yeah. for it to be approved, for it to become part of our, okay. our, our spiritual piety. Well, that makes sense. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think of that, Andrew? It's funny. Cause like, so I love, <laughs> uh, this is like off topic. I love reading about exorcisms and like oh, demonology just gonna something about and all demons. that. And it's just, I the, was just gonna mention the parallels <laughs> though, the parallels are just crazy. Cause it's like the time thing is big. Cause if somebody like comes to a bishop or a priest looking for an exorcism, a big part of what they do is like, they have to go to a, like a psychiatrist, psychologist, mm -hmm. a normal doctor. They have, there's all these steps to make sure that the person, you know, isn't just faking uh, it or, or faking. Yeah. Cause you'll see that sometimes where yeah, somebody's definitely. trying to, 
uh, undermine the church by like saying, Oh, like I wasn't possessed. I just acted, uh, or like people that have maybe like a mental disorder, uh, schizophrenia or bipolar or whatever. And so they, they might think they're possessed even though they're not. So there's this process to f- like weed out those that are we- not in a, like a demeaning way or whatever, but like trying to weed out those that are actually not possessed. And the time factor is huge because it's the process of going through all those other steps with the psychologist, doctor, all that takes many, many months. Mm. And so if they can like make it through all that and there's no other like natural explained uh, phenomenon happening, then they'll start like seeing an exorcist and even exorcists, uh, just reading all these books, uh, Father Gabriel Amorth, the, uh, he was the exorcist for the Vatican for many years. Actually, he might still be, I'm not sure, but uh, he's written a lot of these books trying to educate people about demonology and exorcists and all that. Uh, but even exorcists, when they do see somebody that believes they're possessed, they'll often do things to try to make sure. So they'll like do a lot of prayers in Latin, try because most people don't know Latin, and like sometimes they'll say they're exercising the person, even though they might just be doing normal prayers, to see if the person responds. Mm-hmm. And so they'll like take their time before they start doing the real exorcisms, which are often in Latin, uh, just it's to make sure. Like another control. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Controlled experiment. Because. Uh, I think at Father Gabriel, the statistic is it's like one in over a hundred people are actually possessed. Mm-hmm. So the majority, it's just mental health things, right? Uh, or it's just made up, or various things. Uh, so just the parallels between uh, the process for seeing if somebody's really possessed and the process for verifying miracles are just very similar. And I'm sure it's the same with miracles, where it's like one in a hundred that are submitted actually were miracles. 